up y'all welcome back to my channel if you're new to my channel hey girl hey make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you'll be notified every time that i upload a new video and if you are not already make sure you follow me on social media at the hair life and the hair life official all my social media links will be down in the description box so make sure y'all check that out so honey i'm coming back to show you guys how i make my closure wigs on this sewing machine if you guys are new to my channel and you don't know i am starting my own business so i'm showing y'all like the behind the scenes on how i make my wigs so let's get right into it all right so my last video i showed you guys how to properly double your tracks on the sewing machine and if you guys have not watched that video make sure you go ahead and check that out so what you see me doing now is taking out the extra space in the cap you do this after you have already blocked the measurements um, I would go into a whole nother video showing you guys that, but this is me taking out the extra space. Now y'all see me using a dome cap, you guys. I do not like dome caps on the sewing machine. I will only use mesh dome caps and then I do want to try the ventilated caps, but dome caps are no go for me on the machine. Okay, so these are the caps that I normally use. This is the Q-Fit uh, mesh dome cap. I love these caps. Sometimes you will get one that like the elastic is kind of unraveling, but for the most part, they're pretty good. And the T-pins that you guys are looking at are the actual block measurements for this person's head size. And as you can see, I'm making this on a 23 inch circumference canvas block head. You guys so this next part is optional and when i say that i mean you don't have to do it now as you guys can see i like to sew my closures on first a lot of people like to do theirs last but i like to be done sewing well let me take that back i like sewing my closures on first i like doing the frontals last um i don't know i just the closures don't bother me at all so i like to just sew them on so when i'm done sewing on all the tracks i can just proceed on to molding the part and everything down and be done so i just do this all the way around the closure i like to do neat tight stitches neat work only over here at the hair life okay so these are the metallic markers i use you guys listen do not go and get no sharpie none of that these markers are at walmart for two dollars sis for a four pack okay i promise you they work better than sharpies to me i've even heard people say that chalk works really good i haven't tried that yet but I definitely will. So you guys are just going to see me making out my guidelines. Now, there is no set number or anything that you're supposed to do for your guidelines. It pretty much is based off of how many bundles you have. So I want to say maybe I have four bundles on this wig. I can't really remember. If you have less bundles, make your uh, guidelines further apart. If you have more bundles, make more lines pretty much. So if you guys notice, I draw my lines pretty straight because this is what it looks like when you take it off the machine. They automatically curve. So there's no need for you to curve your tracks when you're making your guidelines. So here's my sewing machine. I have the Singer Classic 44S. I'll leave a link to it down below. And I'm just pointing out my settings to you guys, but I will put my settings in the description box. So if you want to see that, check the description box. So next I'm going to show you guys these presser foot. So this first one, this one comes with the machine. So I don't really care for this presser foot at all. This presser foot, however, is an open toe presser foot and this is a game changer, you guys. You can clearly see that the open toe presser foot has that opening space. So you are able to see exactly what you're doing and it is really a game changer. So I just like to slide that storage compartment off when I'm sewing. It works out a lot better for me um if you're having a hard time like uh turning your cap or whatever try this it definitely helped me out so all you want to do you guys is line your tracks up to your guideline 
And once you do that, you're just going to put that uh, presser foot down. And I like to backstitch the edges of my cap three to four times to make sure that it's nice and secure. Those tracks are not going to go anywhere. And then just, I told you guys in my last video, while you're sewing, just make sure you take your time. There's no need to go super, super fast. Keep in mind, this is sped up. And I do, I'll sew a little bit. I'll stop to make sure I'm still on my line. There's no rush. Like you want to make sure that your work is precise and flawless so do not feel like you have to rush so when i get to the ends of course i'm going to go ahead and cut the wefts and i'm going to backstitch three to four times and i like to cut my wefts with these fisk art um easy action scissors you guys i'm gonna show you a close-up of those in just a second they're super sharp they get the job done i absolutely love them they work way better than regular shears so i'm just snipping off the thread you will have a thread in the inside and the outside of the cap from the bobbin thread and the top thread so yeah you guys can see those are super sharp and precise do not go and get these from joanne sis i'm going to leave a link to walmart but obviously you can go in walmart and get them they are 11 dollars at walmart and i think they're like 20 at joanne sis so no Go get those from Walmart. I love them. They are a must have for me on the machine. So I'm just continuing on with the process, lining my tracks up to my guidelines, making sure everything is neat and precise. And a major, major, major tip, do not, I repeat, do not stretch your cap. Stretching your cap will cause the cap to bunch up and bulk. It will not be right. Do not stretch your cap. You just wanna guide the cap, through the machine, let the machine do the work. There's no need to stretch your cap. All right, so I'm just showing you guys what the inside of my cap is looking like. Super neat stitches. Y'all, my, my stitch game has gotten so much better. So proud of myself. So continue to practice if you're just starting or thinking about it. Girl, go for it because the sewing machine is literally the plug, y'all. I can make a wig super fast on the machine versus hand sewing. Like, I will never go back to hand sewing a full wig. Only thing I'm hand sewing is these closures and the frontals. That's it. Another tip, make sure that the hair on the wefts are up under your presser foot because if not, it will get sewed up into the track and you don't want that to happen. So you guys will see me sew and then I'll stop to make sure everything is looking how it's supposed to. And for closure wigs, you really have to know how to turn your cap to stay on your guideline. So that's why I was telling you guys, taking off that extra storage compartment really allows me to turn my cap better. It just works out way, way better for me. So if you're having a problem turning your cap, try that out and see how that works for you. so i've reached the top and you guys this is where it gets a little bit tricky especially if you um sew your closures on first like i do it can you know get in your way but just make sure that you are getting all the hair out of your way and also making sure that the cap is flat 
and if your track is on your guideline you don't want any lumps and bumps everything needs to be precise and flat so it's I, you guys it's gonna take practice 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 I get better literally every single time I do a wig so I'm just showing you guys here I had doubled all the tracks so I'm taking this track apart um because I didn't want to run out of hair so usually the last two tracks it depends on what it's looking like either the last the very last track I always single but um sometimes the last two I'll just go ahead and single so there's no bulkiness or anything so that's what you guys will see me doing here and you just want to continue doing this all the way to the closure and that last track that I sew right on my closure I make sure that it's not on top of my closure but it's literally lined up to my closure to where while I'm sewing my zigzag stitch will catch the edge of the closure I hope that makes sense I'll show a close-up of what it looks like after I'm done but that's all you guys want to do I hope this video was helpful let me know what other videos you guys want to see me do but I'm gonna let y'all continue watching this and I'll be back Oh, you guys, I did receive a question asking me what kind of needles do I use? So I have a pack of Singer needles. It has heavy duty needles in it, denim needles, and leather uh, needles. So those are like the best ones to use when you're sewing wigs just because it's those needles are strong enough to go through your double, triple, quadruple wefts and go through the cap regular needles will not be able to do that and they will snap so yeah definitely i definitely suggest getting those the pack that i got i got it from walmart or joann's and it was like six or seven dollars so i will link those down below for you guys as well So that is the last track so after I do this like I said you guys I move on to um, just styling and everything so this is what it looks like that last track is stitched really really close to my closure this is what the inside of some of my caps were looking like I just want to show you guys the work and of course if you need a wig made make sure you email me at the hair life LLC or you can DM me on my business page, The Hair Life Official on Instagram, and I will get you all the way together, girl. So yeah, hit me up for custom wigs and custom color. And yeah, you guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what else you guys wanna see on my channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you all on my next one. Bye.